Okay, folks, so today we're going to talk a little bit more about angles. And you remember that last time we talked about angles, we came up with this formula that if you've got some angle, you can draw any size circle you want around it. You find the length of the intercepted arc. You find the length of the radius. And the measure of the angle is the arc length over the radius. Well, what we're going to talk about now is direction of an angle. Because as we move into trigonometry, we want to think not just about an angle as the corner of a shape, but we want to think about an angle as representing motion. So for instance, suppose I've got something started out pointed like that, and then I take that tucker and I turn it. So it starts out here and it turns anti-clockwise, and it ends up pointing something like that. So the angle started here, well, the, the first ray started here, and it ended up over there, right? Well, when we get into the anatomy, just to help kind of kind of keep things clear, we're going to call this side where we start the initial side, and we're going to call this side where we end up the terminal side. And now we have a definite direction. We started at the initial side and we went anti-clockwise around to the terminal side. Now whenever your angle is going in that direction, we're going to call this a positive angle. Well, Mr. Nunn, what if we go the other way around? What if I had started here and this was my initial side? And now I go clockwise like that to end up like so. Well, if this is a positive angle, then you can pretty well bet that what we've got right here is a negative angle. So now not only can we use arc length over radius to find the angle, but we can also look at what direction the angle is going, positive or negative. And one more good way you can kind of help, you know, remember this, you think about unscrewing a bottle cap. When you're unscrewing the cap, that's different from tightening it down. It matters what direction you turn. And so here in trigonometry, we care what direction the angle turns. Now, the other thing we're going to talk about today is placing angles on graph paper. So what if we want to bring a couple of things together? And so here is an angle just floating out in space, hanging out, being cool. You'll notice by the direction of this arrow, that's a negative angle. So here's the initial side. Here's the terminal side. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to get this angle on a graph paper. Because we know a lot of tricks from Algebra 1 and Algebra 2, we can do with graph paper. So what I'm going to do, it's, it's very tricky, but just watch carefully. I'm going to go ahead and draw a set of axes. So there's my x-axis. And there's my y-axis. And then I'm just going to turn the paper so that my angle lines up with it. So just like this. Now what I want to do when I turn the paper is I always want to make sure that the initial side ends up on the positive x-axis. The initial side should always be here, the x-axis going to the right. And then wherever the other side ends up, wherever the terminal side ends up, so be it. So for instance, in this case, my terminal side is ending up in this quadrant, and so I can just label it right there. There we are. My initial side is always right here. My terminal side is wherever it winds up. And you remember back in Algebra 1, these quadrants here, 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 and here, they have names. This is quadrant 1 going anti-clockwise here. This is quadrant 2. Here we got quadrant 3. And here we got quadrant 4. So I could say that this angle that I've got right here on the board right now is a quadrant one angle because that's where the terminal side ends up. Now I don't have to look at the initial side. Remember, the initial side always going to be on the right-hand x-axis, but the terminal side right there. So we got positive angles are going anti-clockwise like this, got negative angles are going clockwise like this, and when we draw an angle on graph paper, we're always going to put the initial side on the right-hand x-axis, the terminal side on the left hand. Now, let me erase a little bit of this right now and just make a little room. 
time for a little bit of a review from geometry. So let's suppose you get out your measuring tools and you find out that this angle right here is 38 degrees. And suppose I asked you to find the complement. Well, remember, complement, C-O-M-P-L-I-M-E-N-T, a complement means two angles that add up to 90 degrees. So whatever the complement of this is, it would be the angle that goes right here so that my two angles together make 90 degrees. And we can just do a little arithmetic. 90 degrees take away 38 degrees. 90 degrees is the whole thing. Take away 38 degrees for this one. Gives us 52 degrees. And so our complement is 52 degrees. What if I asked for a supplement? Oh, supplement. Ah, supplement. What does that mean? Oh, well, let's see. If I go back and I remember geometry, supplement means two angles that together make 180 degrees or make a straight angle. So if I'm here at 38 degrees, I'd have to go all the way over to there to find the supplement. Well, again, if these two angles together make 180, then I can just subtract 180 degrees for both angles together minus 38 degrees for this angle gives me 142 degrees. So this angle right here is 142 degrees for the supplement. Now those two ideas come from geometry. There's two more ideas we need to talk about. So let me draw a fresh picture now. This is starting to get a little cluttered. So let me draw a fresh picture here. First idea is coterminal. C-O-T-E-R-M-I-N-A-L angles, coterminal angles. Well, remember, if I draw on graph paper, I'm always going to put the initial side here on the positive x-axis. I'm going to put the terminal side wherever it lands. Let's suppose that my particular angle went around like this and ended up right about here and was 120 degrees positive because we're going anti-clockwise. And somebody asked me to find a coterminal. What does that mean? Coterminal means any other angle that ends up at the same spot that has the same terminal side. Because remember, this is the terminal side. Coterminal ends at the same spot. So let me switch colors here and draw a coterminal angle. Well, one way I could get a coterminal angle is I could start at the same spot and I could go around this way, the negative direction. That would be coterminal. Now, if you look at this picture, you'll notice that the arc I drew in black and the arc I drew in red together, they make a complete circle. So if I wanted to find this coterminal angle, I would say, well, look, these two angles together add up to 360. So 360 take away 120 degrees. The black angle right here leaves me with 240 degrees. That's not very dark. Let me write that again for you. 240 degrees. And notice since we're going this way, what kind of angle is it? Darn right, that angle's negative. So negative 240 degrees. Mr. Nunn, is that the only coterminal angle there is? No, not at all. So here's another one I could make. Again, here's my original angle, and I want to find a coterminal. Well, what if instead of going around clockwise, what if I went anti clockwise? Now, if I just stop there, that's the same angle, but I could go all the way around and then come back around and then end up where I was before. That would be coterminal because I'm ending at the same spot. Coterminal. Same end. Well, what would this be? Well, let's see. I went all the way around once. All the way around once is 360 degrees. And then I went this much more, and I know this much more is 120 degrees. So I have 360 degrees, add 120 degrees, gives me 
480 degrees, and I'm going this way, so this angle is positive. So positive 480 degrees is also coterminal. Are those the only two coterminal angles? No, there are lots of them, because I could have gone around twice and then stopped here, or I could go clockwise three times and then stop here. There are lots of them. In fact, there are an infinite number of them, because you could keep doing that all day as long as you end at that spot. Now you'll notice so far today I've been pretty nice to you because we've only worked in degrees. But now let's try looking at radians. So here's my x-axis, here's my y-axis, and this time we're going to try this little angle right here, positive again, pi over 6, positive pi over 6. And I would first like to find an angle that is complementary. So let's see. Well, complementary means that together they add up to 90 degrees. Now, wait a minute, that's the geometry definition. We're in trig now. And we learned last time we were together that a square angle, a right angle, is pi over 2. So this angle here in black plus its complement to make a right angle, I'll draw it there in blue, have to add up to pi over 2. So now we're going to have to do a little bit of arithmetic. You might be a little rusty on your fractions, but don't worry, we're going to practice fractions a lot. The whole thing together makes pi over 2. Now I want to get the blue angle, so I got to take away the black angle. So take away pi over 6. Now you remember from Algebra 1 and elementary school, when you subtracted fractions, you got to have the same denominator. And my denominator here is 6. So I'm going to need to multiply my first fraction by 3 over 3. Multiply top and bottom by 3. You've got to multiply top and bottom to keep the balance. So now I have 3 times pi is 3 pi over 3 times 2 is 6. Take away 1 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, take away 1 pi over 6, gives me 2 pi over 6. I'm not quite done yet because that fraction can be simplified. 2 over 6 can be simplified to 1 third. And so my final answer, the complement, is pi over 3. This blue angle is pi over 3. So pi over 3 is the complement to pi over 6. The two together make a square angle of pi over 2. Well, what if I asked, instead of complementary, what if I want supplementary? Well, now my angle is going to have to go all the way across there to make a straight angle. The angle we've got, pi over 6, plus the angle in blue, together make a straight angle. And you remember from geometry that we would say they add up to 180 degrees. But again, we're not in geometry anymore, we're in trig. And we learned yesterday, the well, last time we were together, that 180 degrees is the same thing as pi. So these two angles together have to add up to pi. So if I start with pi and I subtract the black angle of pi over 6, then that's going to tell me what the blue angle is. Now again, I need a common denominator. So we want to think here of pi as 1 pi over 1, and the common denominator is 6. So I'm going to multiply the first one by 6 over 6. And so now we have 6 pi over 6 times 1, 6, minus 1 pi over 6, gives us 5 pi over 6. And so now we know that the blue angle is 5 pi over 6. We talked about complementary, we talked about supplementary, now coterminal. So let's just stick with this angle right here of pi over 6. So here I have this angle of pi over 6, and I want to find a coterminal angle. Well, one way I could do that, I always have to start at the positive x-axis, but instead of going anti-clockwise to get to that terminal side, I could go clockwise to get to that terminal side. All right. 
So now I want to find a coterminal. Well, let's see. The black angle and the blue angle together make a complete circle. And we know from last time that a complete circle is 2 pi. So if I want to find just the blue angle, I'm going to have to take the complete circle, 2 pi, and subtract the angle there in black, which is pi over 6. Okay, again, we got to do common denominator. So I'm going to change that 2 pi into 2 pi over 1. Common denominator is 6. So I'm multiplying the first fraction by 6 over 6. Now I have 12 pi over 6. Take away 1 pi over 6. Leaves me with 11 pi over 6. And so now I know that blue angle is 11 pi over 6. And because I can see in the picture that that blue angle is going around clockwise, that means the angle is negative. So my answer is negative 11 pi over 6. Negative 11 pi over 6. Could I get there any other way? Absolutely. I could have gone counterclockwise instead of clockwise. So I could start with my same angle here of pi over 6. And instead of deciding to go around clockwise, what if I go anti-clockwise? I could go all the way around once and then go a little bit more to get to that terminal side. Well, how far did I go this time? I went all the way around once, and all the way around once is 2 pi. That would get me from here around to here. But then I have to go a little bit more, so I have to go another pi over 6. Okay, now I'm just going to add those up. Common denominator, 2 pi over 1, we already know becomes 12 pi over 6. Add 1 pi over 6 means that we get 13 pi over 6. And checking the direction, this time I'm going anti-clockwise, so my angle is positive. So there we have it. Direction of angle, positive meaning clock, uh, anti-clockwise, or negative meaning clockwise. We can have a complement of an angle, the two angles have to add up to a right angle. We can have a supplement of an angle, the two angles have to add up to a straight angle. And we can also have coterminal angles. The two angles have to have their terminal side at the same spot.